I'm particularly emotional at the moment. Um, I, uh, I get that way when I experience kindness as expected or otherwise. This wonderful Dell computer that Kathy got me when the prior one was stolen has been fabulous. I purchased it for its low power consumption, long battery life, and something's gone wrong inside, it appears. For the last month, maybe, it has half the battery life, a short or something. I buy Dell among, for other reasons, as well as the extended warranty, because I use these things. I'm extremely careful, but I'm on them 10 hours a day. And with Dell's extended warranty, they'll, well, each one I've had, they've wound up rebuilding several times at their expensive expense. I'm very careful, but that's the nature of my work, and it's fabulous. But I have what's called depot service, where when the system needs service, you send it in, and in a couple of weeks, it comes back. They have on-site service, but it's more expensive, so I've never done that. Well, with this round of problems, they got, they became aware of my cancer. And uh, it's not the cancer that I'm emotional about, it's their kindness. So they escalated it to depot service. A tech replaced the whole guts of the system about a, five days ago. It didn't resolve the problem, no discredit to anyone. These things can be difficult to diagnose. And it turns out that the webcam stopped working. I'm using a little camera here right now. I hope it works. I've just gotten word that they're going to replace my system. It's such a small thing, but I didn't ask that. And I needed it. Well, anyway. I expect to my double surprise, I'll explain that in a second, I ex expect that by midnight tonight I will have gone on a fast and operate under a vow of silence that I'll break only in operational situations, ordering zero calorie electrolytes or speaking briefly with the Secret Service if they need that or if I have medical emergencies whether due to pain in my teeth I was to get a tooth extracted it's decayed through or associated with the fast I will, under those circumstances, make exceptions to the silence. I said double, I think I may have said double surprise, because A, I didn't see this coming. As a matter of fact, not three days ago, I told someone, no, I've got cancer, it's just not going to be time for me to be on a, a fast again just three days ago maybe four but two or three days ago after telling that person that totally independent of it I experienced one of the rawest rawest vicious acts I've ever received 
I had two solar batteries because the first one had failed. It's a $320 battery, including the inverter electronics from Goal Zero. For my application, there's nothing like it. It's a it's a godsend thanks to Beverly and Kathy. I had two because the first one failed. Please remember, as batteries become more important in our life, rechargeable batteries, most if not all, consider them like a plant that, if it's not flooded with water, maybe as a rice plant needs to be, it will, it will die. Well, the distributor apparently had not kept this battery fully charged, which must be very difficult as a distributor, but they didn't. So it was clearly too low on charge, and the, the company fairly aggressively sent me a replacement, and I held on to the old one. Well, a young man uh, who lives on the street, I had seen him occasionally at a, uh, oh, the Georgetown homeless ministry that I've been to two or three times for a shower. Uh, and I'd seen him in a, in a coffee shop that I used to, to go in. We never chatted. I didn't find him, um, I didn't, oh, I didn't find much goodness in him, sort of a parasite. Well, he stopped by on a, with his bike, to which he has a Schwinn kid trailer attached with his stuff. He's very intelligent, as many people on the street are. asked me about the solar panels and in a way that I didn't make me alarmed and I mean I didn't even think to be alarmed I explained and it was clear he knew quite a bit well bottom line I said hey you're welcome to this this battery if you'd like it the electronics inside might be useful to you it did not have the inverter I only had one of those so he happily took it. He returned several days later, I thought, just to tell me that he had gotten it working as he said he could. He opened it up and inserted a new core to the battery, which was the part that, that uh, had gone dead. I thought that was very industrious. I told him so. I'm aware now he asked about, gee, there's another piece of electronics that goes with this. The inverter has a cigarette adapter, lighter adapter, yada, yada, yada. And I indicated at that point, you know, yes, that's probably true, but I don't go into detailed conversations with people on the street because, as you would know, we're very vulnerable. He had told me in two encounters recently that he had been robbed. I assume he was telling me the truth. Well, the next day I came back to my stuff having gone to find out that um, my tooth needs to be removed. I went because of the pain. And to my shock, the inverter was gone. I leave my stuff all covered up. He had come back and knew exactly what he was looking for. It's an odd piece of equipment, the way it attaches to the larger battery. No one would know that it was a separate piece of equipment. It screws on. No one would have known what it was. No one would have had a use to it. It only fits to this 300 $300 battery. So it was just incredibly vicious. I didn't sell this battery to him. I gave it to him. Just incredibly vicious. And it, it tempted the anger in me, the hatred in me, those circuits. It tempted for them to come online. And it was an interesting struggle. Well, all this is relevant because it caused me to have a thought that I've never had in my life. It caused me to, I mean, it just never occurred to me. I didn't know the thought was there to be had. It caused me to wrestle with what I really cared about with this young man. Do I try and press charges? Um, do I, do I uh, register a police report? I quickly realized, of course, that there, you know, it would be a he, he said, she said. 
But for his own good, do I do that? Uh, do I go and, and talk to him to try and access some level of guilt? Um, do I go and take it back? Do I go and smash what's there so he can't use it? Uh, these were all fleeting thoughts, but I went through them all. And as I delved more deeply into what is in my relationship to this young man, what do I care about regarding this young man, this thought that I recall never having about anyone, including myself, was his soul. I value his soul more than anything. Now, that didn't give me a clear idea of what his soul is, and it didn't give me a clear idea of what then to do. I'm going to check to be sure this is recording. However, it was not metaphysical, it was not abstract for me, it was um, the, the concept of soul brought me in touch with something in him and something in all of us that has not been on my radar screen. I don't know what it is. But it was real to me that it was there. It was actually the thing itself. My coming to my consciousness, the awareness of that thing itself. Th that caused the term to come to my mind. The notion of soul. It wasn't the other way around. It was that thing which, as I've thought about it, is the source of us, the psychological source of us, the black rock maybe inside us that Diane Wilson uh, speaks of, the monolith. But again, none of this is metaphysical for me. I'm using metaphysical words for something that I experience as a, as a concrete part of our psychology, part of our nervous system. Well, that notion of maybe three days ago now isn't something I've spent an hour thinking about. But what to do for the world is my whole, whole existence. And that concept re-emerged, not at my bidding, but in my mind, in my nervous system. that the hope for humanity is that its soul be reawakened, saved, resurrected. How is the soul different than the heart? I'm not sure, except that this notion that soul is at the root of everything. It's the, it's the dark object at the foundation of the heart, the head, the flesh. And whereas all my writing and talking and focus on the heart has been correct, it's clear to me that our hearts are somewhere between sufficiently dead and so hugely defended by the rest of our nervous system that averting echocide by reaching people's hearts is not going to do it. But by moving the basic foundation, the soul, that part of the nervous system, I'm feeling a tremendous sense that that's the place to focus, that's the, sense, that's the place for me to focus my efforts. How do you do that? Well, on the one hand, I don't know. On the other hand, I have a fairly clear sense a fairly strong sense that I didn't go looking for, it found me. That going on this fast, observing a vow of silence, 
but for the exceptions I mentioned. Is an approach to mankind's soul. No, I have no illusion that it will succeed, that it will have an effect, that it will be known. I'll not promote it. I'll not let people know. I'll be under a vow of silence. Oh, I will be posting, I suspect, on, uh, on the internet, but I will, as I have in recent weeks, I will not be looking at incoming mail and I suspect not incoming Facebook. As part of the, of the vow of silence, which strikes me as a way of bypassing the defenses, and, and by the way, it's my nervous system that's telling me this, not my simple mind, that silence is a way of bypassing the defenses of the head and the flesh and even the heart. For me or for you. Now I said doubly surprised. December of, no, New Year's of, la, of a year ago. I had a flash of insight due to some things that were changing around me in my environment, people I was coming in contact with, that I needed to resume a hunger strike that I had just ended. I don't remember how long I had taken it, 40 days or so. I had, it was clear to me I should stop, and then within several days, this hasn't happened before, it was clear to me I needed to resume it. And I did, and in just a day or so, it became even more clear to me that I should stop, that it was going to have no impact whatsoever, that I was not going to reach people's hearts, and I think that was true. Well, last night as I was walking back from the Library of Congress, that same sort of thought came to me loving, you are going to reach no one with this silent fast. I expect to be taking only water, electrolytes, vitamins. I have no, I, no notion that it will, will stop. I expect this time I'll wind up in the hospital and then in a, a psych ward. I don't expect the cancer will take me first. So as I'm walking back from the library, loving, this is not going to have any impact. In part due to all your prior hunger strikes. I've never cried wolf, but it is of that effect. You're just going to be ignored, man. And I had that thought going to sleep. I was sure that this video log was going to be saying, nope, not now. That may happen, but it's not happening. Because this morning I woke with the notion of soul back clearly in my mind. I woke up that way. You're right, loving. You are not going to reach people's hearts. But you could reach a soul. Your plan could reach a soul now or maybe soon enough. It could move a soul and that could move another soul. Even the heart would be confused by me, my life, my prior attempts. Not the soul, the soul would not be. The soul of another would not be confused. It is the place where we meet God. The heart is close, but the soul is where we meet God, that ultimate psychological construct. It would not be confused. So to my double surprise, I expect that
starting midnight, I will cease all calories. And stay on a fast under a vow of silence until I see the heart of humanity move to give our grandchildren a home. instead of the hell that we are currently giving them. Through Echoside.